word. Guys, I think we should start with, because Maxie was away last week and we spoke about an article that we really know not that much about and Maxie does. And that was Mike Tyson making a comeback. Come back. Maxie listened to it and he was like, guys, you know nothing. I'd have had so much to say on that article. <laughs> you guys should not talk about <laughs> boxing ever again. So, let's. Look, if you make me look worse, we don't need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear what Maxie has to say about Mike Tyson's comeback. Maxie. Okay. Um, I guess, like, I, I sent some messages just for a bit of context. I sent some messages to the group and I numbered them one <laughs> through yes. to four yes. with a 1A and 1B as well because I was listening <laughs> to it and there were so many times I was like, what? This doesn't like this. I guess there's just like an, I'm, I'm thinking, especially when we think about how hard boxing is, I'm thinking maybe some people, I think it's normal to think boxing is like fighting almost maybe. Like if someone... I, I don't understand, but let me just go through it. So first of all, Alex, like, first of all, Maxi, go on. Yeah. Um, context. Um, Maxi's dad is a boxing instructor, is it? Yeah. And Maxi grew up boxing. He grew up with. So a- my granddad was a professional boxer. My dad was a. He never became professional, but he was like uh, British champion boxing and fourth in the world kickboxing. And then I grew oh. up around boxing, and I coached boxing and had some fights whilst I was at university so i'm not actually like there's much bigger fans of boxing out there than me but what i probably understand more than most is how the sport itself works if you know what i mean yes. you get a lot of people that will oh, tell me about boxing and they can tell me about all these sort of boxes and stuff but then when i ask them about basic technique or when they give me some opinions on fitness levels and stuff it just doesn't make any sense in relation to the actual sport yeah you know what i mean yeah so there's one particular thing that Alex said last week that he said he would run around the ring until Mike Tyson got tired <laughs> because he's 53 years old and then he'll punch him. For me, that's the equivalent of me saying for Alex to understand. That's like me saying if I played against Shaq today, I would just run around the court instead of trying to shoot and hope Shaq gets tired by standing under the hoop. Yeah, all right. Like, I see that. I see that. The only way, the only way you get tired in boxing, there's, there's two main ways you get tired in boxing. One is by missing by trying to punch and missing. So to get Mike Tyson tired, you'll have to get him to try to punch you, but miss you. And then the second one is to put a lot of nervous energy on him when you're trying to punch him. There's two ways you get people tired in boxing. What do you mean nervous energy? So it'd be impossible for me to tire Mike Tyson out. (laughs) You could not, no, because, so if you punch me and I'm not scared of the punch, I won't get tired. Like if you punch me with flimsy punches, I'm not gonna get tired. I can stand there all day and just roll your punches. But if you punch me and I'm scared you're gonna knock me out, it takes a lot of energy out my body to try and make sure I don't get hit because oh. everything's a bit more touchy, right? So that's when you start How, getting tired. What would I have to do? What kind of punch would I have to throw on Mike Tyson for him to go, oh, hold on a second. Uh, and balls. Okay. You hit you, him in the balls. You need to get out of the ring, get someone yeah. else who's the box, bring him, in, <laughs> bring him in the ring to a fat guy to punch Mike Tyson, <laughs> then get back out of the ring, get him out of the ring, and you jump back in. <laughs> Bring in a <laughs> ringer, basically. Uh, um, so I guess that's the first thing. I think the first thing is just underestimate, underestimating like um, what ring craft is. Like for someone that's trained, they're never going to get tired against that. Like Mike Tyson could fight against a lot of the best, well, a lot of heavyweight sort of regional champions and not get tired at all. They just won't be scared enough of what they can do to him. Wow. And he wow. won't miss enough punches for him to... Who knew feel was such a big aspect of getting tired in boxing? Yeah. Mm. Wow. Um, and then I guess the next point is, uh, Mike Tyson, like, is probably... I love Mike Tyson. He's done so much for the sport, but he's probably one of the most overrated heavyweights there is. Okay. Because wow. Mike Tyson, from his ki- career from 19 to 24, was an absolute beast. And, and he knocked everybody out, right? Yeah. And he and he and you're right. He punches like he punches like no other. There's no one else that punches like him. There's people that punch harder than him. There's no one that punches from the like the way he punches because he's so much shorter than everybody else. But from 19, and I should have looked this up. It's either 24, 25 ish. He was a beast. And then he went to prison for raping yeah. someone for three years. And then he came back and he had 13 fights and he lost five of them oh. because he lost five because he just wasn't good enough and that fire that he had when he was a kid wasn't there anymore and also in his his style is so is so based around his athletic ability as well that no one gets taught that today because it's just he's a freak 
that no one teaches you to box the way Mike Tyson did because only Mike Tyson could do what Mike Tyson did because he's such a freak in the way he is, like just the way he can get that rotational speed so quickly from such a low position. So all, even his jab was based all about how quickly he could spin his body, where a lot of other people, we throw the jab, yes, it's how quickly you can spin your body, but it's also how quickly you can prepare yourself forwards. Does yeah. that make sense? Huh. Mike Tyson doesn't do that as much. He's more about, he just swings his hips so quickly. As soon as he connects you, like with his, all the muscles combined from his toes up to his fist, as soon as that connects, you're done basically. But we, it's really hard to teach someone as, that. like to do what he does, right? Yeah. That being said, now he's 53 years old. His punching isn't going to be as hard as he was when he was when he was young. And yeah. the speed he does it is never going to be as fast. And it's going to take a lot more energy for him to do that. So if he is trying to punch heavyweights of today, he will get gassed out very quickly, I think. And so you're saying most, I have a chance. But, no, <laughs> most no. top 10. I think every single top 10 heavyweight today beats Mike Tyson in his oh, wow. 53 year old. Wow. Because he's just too old. Like, it just, that's what happens in boxing. So like you in, don't. Like most sports. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think that happens in every sport. I'm not sure many sports where you could still win against a top 10 in the world of 50 something. Yeah. So you uh, don't think I mean, he's going to be lawn balls. successful? <laughs> I'm not even too sure he's going to return, if I'm honest. But I don't think when he does, I don't think he's going to be successful. And I don't even, I'm not, you can't even, he's a different man completely. I can't even say there's a Shannon Briggs, I think it's about 50 as well. We're talking about fighting him or Evander Holyfield. You couldn't call that at all. because They're just different people now. But like, they're so yeah. different to what they were back then. I think it's going to be an expedi- uh, expedition fight. You get a lot of money for it. Yeah, mm. he get a lot of money for it, and his podcast is unbelievable. I love listening to uh, what is it? Has he got uh, a podcast? Hot box with Mike or something? Mm. Oh, it's such a good podcast. Like to get an insight into how he was as a person. But he was just when he was growing up, when he was like what he was, he was so hungry, and he was like he come from such a rough place, and he was like he was a killer. Like he was he would be happy to kill someone, right? Today wow. he's not really that person. Like he says he is, but. He's worked so long with psychologists and stuff to try and tame himself. I don't think you can just cool. say, right, I'm turning it back on. I'm now mm. a killer again. Does he regret, has he ever spoken that's a on... a different topic, but... Does he regret biting off the ear? He, he's on to, that's one you have to listen to. He had a podcast and he had Evander Holyfield on his show, the oh, person wow. he bit the ear off of. And they talk about it and they laugh about it. What? Um, and he never says the word he regrets it, but he just, he just says like, he... His psyche is so different to ours. He just says, like, he was in a place. He was, like, a different person. And he can't exp- say, like, whether it was good or bad or anything about that person. That's just a different person, in his, in his opinion. He's oh, like, I don't want to have an opinion on that person. That's not me. That's s- basically how he thinks. Oh, wow. Have you seen The Last Dance? Uh, I've yes. seen, yes, but not the first two episodes, which is random. But, yeah, I've seen the rest of it. Yeah. That is kind of random, but... <laughs> I, I what's been a big commentary about that and it, it kind of sounds similar in terms of the mind state is how like psych psychologically how jordan was in terms of, like people like mm. people are making memes up about like people going up to him going good game and he'll go good game what does that mean and then that fuels his fire <laughs> to like beat them yeah um, <laughs> It's kind of it kind of sounds like that <laughs> like that Mike Tyson in terms of like that that fire that he has like whatever it yeah. was that made yeah. him that competitive. It's that just, that, it's, that it was, mindset you missed the mic. Good that, game, Mike. That that <laughs> mindset that you're talking about. Um, yeah. Tim Grover. Tim Grover was his personal trainer, but also his yeah. mindset coach and that. And um, Tim Grover yeah. also did Kobe, right? And he said that yeah. he said that Michael Jordan's mindset was was well above anyone else that he's trained like he's never met anyone else that has the mindset of um mj he goes the one the closest one to that was kobe and he said there was like mj was head and shoulders above that so like Mm. just the that's and i guess tim grover if no one knows he 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 personal training with the highest with the best athletes in the world so like for him to say something like uh, that uh, He's got a fantastic book called Relentless. Yeah, I Relentless. I 100% yeah. recommend people reading. Um, it's that, really was based, that was pretty he, much based on me. Yeah, <laughs> he goes into... <laughs> he, he goes into like the different... He goes into some of the the athletes he works with and, and the type of mindset, but what the similarities between them versus others and like what's the difference between being great and like being like being great and being elite, basically. Like how, yeah. how that slight t- tweak can make a big difference. But yeah. 
seeing like even reading that book and understanding what that was and understanding the people he's training going yeah okay i see it i see it but then listening listening to what michael jordan said on that documentary and watching his face as he said it was just like another level of like oh Mm. like okay that's what it looks like (laughs) i I get it (laughs) but i will say i think it takes like there's obviously there's that mindset of being relentless but i think not like so michael jordan would have been successful at a lot of sports but i think it takes a different mindset in combat sports yeah but give him time in baseball see what would have happened kind of thing right how long did he do it for two uh, a year and a half half. less than less than two years yeah yeah Yeah, like he jumped in at a pretty good level like he did all right they said he made the major league like i could be the most disciplined and most regimental and like so committed to boxing but if when someone punches me in the face i have an instinct inside me to be like oh fuck like that was scary <laughs> you don't become a boxer it doesn't matter what your mindset's like and it's, it's something you can't change so when people step in the gym it's it's very quick and i i personally haven't seen it anyone really change significantly but you can very quickly tell someone that's just a fighter they can be completely raw they can be so bad but they're just someone that is happy to like let their hands go and take punches in the process training someone like that like they've got a chance but training someone that just doesn't like taking punches and they're very hard to teach how to like enjoy taking punches or even enjoy how to enjoy hurt hurting people like if you don't enjoy hurting people you're not gonna become a world champion yeah you know i, I mean? want to know that i'm intrigued because you've obviously dealt with a lot of people and like you're just saying you could tell I, like when you say you can tell very quick and someone i'm guessing that's not a statement of anyone can do that that's an experience thing from from the amount of people you've seen so I think uh, like, you. I reckon you could have a good guess, pretty quick. Well, what I'd be intrigued about is someone like. So if I was to use myself as an example, like I know for a fact because I've been in like a boxing class. Um, albeit it wasn't for boxing; it was for cardio. It was more for like the conditioning Boxer for basketball. Size. But then I know that you, like I know if I was to go in with you or something, I know that if you would start throwing punches, like I'm gonna like. I don't want to be here. Like, I know that about myself. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, I also know about myself that if you put me in the right mindset, which I've been in many a times in my life, I, you can throw as many punches as you want from me. I will end you. Like, I, I've Ooh. had both mindsets. I, I haven't been there in a long time because I, pers- I purposely chose not to. Like, I, I, I've made myself aware yeah. of what makes me get to that place and that kind of stuff. But how they're not people like that in boxing where it's just uh, you, once you get them switch? into a mind state, they become... It's that um, there are some people that switch, but it's like it's such a delicate process to be able to switch into that mindset and still maintain like your, you know, control over everything, you, all the skills and technique as well. And maybe that's true. I don't know. Like, and I, but to be honest, one of the things is like there's if in the boxing community as well. Like, it's a bit of a joke that there's always someone that comes into the gym and is just like. Yeah, I wouldn't box because when I switch, man, I'll I'll, I'll hurt someone. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. When you switch, you're gonna get hurt because like that's when that's your most you dangerous when you become aggressive. Like re- when you become reckless, that's when you're most at danger of being hurt yourself more so yeah. than hurting someone else. So I I don't know. Like I've seen I know some people that um that I do both. Like they're also they're actually happy to take a punch, like very happy to take a punch. Um, but they're not uh, aggressive enough going forwards. But then. They have a they have a switch as well where they turn into this beast all of a sudden, but then they become aggressive, but their technique just goes out the window. Like they're just they're not very good at controlling I guess both more, levels. Like more emotionally driven and calculated, and yeah, the more so emotional just like, you get in a sport, the harder it you is get to people be that are just cold killers. Like they're just it doesn't take anything. They're like, yeah, I will smash my fist through the back of your brains, and I'm happy to do that. When you see someone like that, and they're also dedicated with with the Michael Jordan mindset in boxing, then you've got a winner, which is why I think um, boxing can be different. Like you can say to Mike Tyson, he won't be as disciplined as someone like Jordan or Kobe, because he has that kid in, like that kid instinct is so dominant, which doesn't work in a sport like basketball. Like it doesn't matter if you have that kid instinct as much, if you know what I mean. Like that's not you don't have to tune that up as much. But in boxing, you really have to tune that up, especially when you're fighting big guys that are going to knock you out. Shit. I like this. It's fascinating. In, it's such an insight to me. So I, I genuinely know nothing about boxing. Yeah, I've yeah. probably yeah. seen probably less why. than ten fights my whole life. Yeah, I can't no, watch it. Uh, it's interesting. But then, like Mayweather, uh, he is like a weird. Like for example, Mayweather. If you watch him, you'd think, especially the later Mayweather, like the money Mayweather, as we call him, 
instead of pretty <laughs> boy Mayweather. Money Mayweather. So, yeah, so when he started making big money for each fight and become more of a businessman, he doesn't look like he has a killer instinct because he's so strategic and so defensive and he would just tap you on the brain, and, like on the brain, on the head and get a point. Mm. Um, but watch him when he was younger and he has it. You know, like he has that, he had that killer instinct and he so knows like he's happy to break some rules and like get rough and dirty. Like, like people just have it. It's uh, I don't have it. Like, that's one of the reasons, that's one of the many reasons I didn't go into boxing is I just don't have the killer instinct. Like when I hurt someone in the gym, I feel bad for hurting someone in the gym. Yeah. Do you know? Hmm. Yeah. So, Aww. and I've been punched enough to be like, I don't know if my brain's going to work if I stay in this sport. <laughs> <laughs> I need my engineering like, brain. Leave me alone. Is it, like, is I got that punched much, um... on. Oh. oh yeah, I got punched on. I, I didn't know where I got punched at the time, but the video showed me I got punched on the left side of my head. But it felt like I got punched on the right side of my head. What? Because Ooh, like my whole brain, brain just rattled. Oh. It's just like I don't know. I don't know how you explain it. But my whole brain just rattled, and then I stood on my feet and sort of went like out for a second. And then the ref, next thing I know, the refs counted me. And to be honest, I can't like the whole fight, whole round was just a bit of a blur. But the ref, I knew the ref counted me out, and then I just sort of danced around the ring towards the end just to like stay alive. Like my legs were strong and everything else, but for some reason my brain just went, nope, I don't like this. And then I was like, that hurt. Oh, and man. even though, like, when it say it hurt, it doesn't hurt much in the ring. Like, you know you got hit hard. It doesn't hurt. You're not like, oh, that really hurt me. You're like, <laughs> okay, let me sort this out. Then after the fight, my brain is like, whoa, like, I've got a headache now. Oh. And that was my last fight. I was like, there's no point. So I won that fight, but then I was like, there's, there's no point. Like, I want to be an engineer. I don't need to be taking punches in the head. Mm. Is, yeah. there any, is there much of a discussion about, like, CTE in boxing and stuff? Uh yeah, there's a lot of discussions about not letting kids take headshots and um but that's actually a big reason why in amateur boxing it was like if you took one hard punch, even if it didn't hurt you, the ref would like stop the fight for a second and make sure you're okay. Um and it used to be more like more of a martial arts where you have to wear head cards, you wear big puffy gloves, still hurts obviously. Um and and like a knockdown punch was scored equally to a jab to the face or a jab to the body. Like, so you wasn't insensitized to knock someone out, especially when it's only three rounds. It's quite hard. Yeah. However, recently they've made some changes where you don't wear head guards when you're adults anymore. You, um, in the sort of bigger competitions, you have smaller gloves and they score it more similar to professional boxing, which is like bigger punch. If you dominate the round just through strength, then you get more points for that. Um, so there's another organization which is setting up to basically say like that is not what we want to do as amateur boxing like we want to focus on the craft of the sport yeah um and then obviously when you talk about cte this new way of doing things is gonna we've been working for so long on like all the science and the research on reducing the chances of having like long-term head injuries now all of a sudden we've just jumped in the opposite direction so there's a lot of boxing clubs that are really upset with that and they're going to start their own new foundation to combat that basically Oh. <laughs>